Remember I told you that the router ID has to be unique on every OSPF router. But what if you have the same router ID in two different OSPF areas? Is it gonna cause a problem? I don't know, let's find out. So in the last video, I told you that every router ID has to be unique throughout the whole OSPF domain. I actually had a case where someone was asking me about the OSPF behavior when you have a duplicate router ID in a different OSPF area. My initial response was that all OSPF router IDs must be unique in all areas, otherwise you're going to run into problems. But this doesn't seem to be true 100% of the time in every situation. I wanted to make this lab video in between video 5 and video 6 to explore this topic. Now I'm going to mention some things we haven't covered yet like the LSA types and how they're propagated and things like that. Don't worry for now, you don't have to pause and Google or anything like that. We'll cover it in detail later. But I just wanted to um, expose you to some of these ideas and concepts and break up a little bit of the uh, lectures with some hands on. What we have here is five routers, three areas. And right now, all the routers have a router ID like 1.1.1.1, where the number is the router number. So of course, we don't have any problems right now. I'm going to change router 4 to have the same router ID as router 1 in this video, and then we'll look at the OSPF behavior and a couple different situations. But first, let's just start uh, by reviewing some of the routing table. We look on router 4. You can see that we have routes to area zero and area one. Now this is just how I've done the IP addressing scheme to make things easy. If you need to pause, take in the topology and that'll help you as I go over some things. If we look on router one, of course we have routes to area zero, area two, um, and these are the two links in area two. So this is the dot two and this is the dot 22. We also have these loopback interfaces that I've configured. Right now, I have not enabled these loopback interfaces for OSPF, so none of the other routers know about these interfaces right now. They just know about the 10 dot networks. I'll spare you the time in the video, but if I ping all over the place, it's going to work. So I can ping from router 5 to router 1 and so on and so forth. But what I'm going to do is change the router ID on router 4 to be identical to router 1. So we'll go into the OSPF process. Then we're going to use the router ID command to change the router ID. When you do this, you need to clear the OSPF process or restart the device for the ID change to take effect. So I'm going to go ahead and clear uh, OSPF on all the routers so that this change is propagated through the whole domain. And now we'll need to wait a little bit for convergence. Okay, and we have our routes back. If we look, we have, we've got routes to area zero and area one, and if we come back to router one, we still have the routes to both of the segments in area two. The reason for this is because router three is the area border router between area two and area zero. So what router three is going to do is basically summarize all of the routes that he has in this area and, and flood that into area zero. Router 2 is going to pick that up being the area border router between area 1 and area 0 and he's going to flood that into area 1. So the advertising router to reach all of these networks in area 0 is actually going to be router ID of router 3 and in area 1 the router ID is going to be router 2. So let's take a look at that. If we look at router 3. We can see that router 3 ID 3.3.3.3 is advertising the summary. This is LSA 3 for 10.1.2.0 and 10.1.22.0. So as you see, the, the router ID is 3.3.3.3 and it's basically saying, hey, if you want to get to these networks, come to me. I know the way. We look on router 2. We see that router 2 is receiving those advertisements from router 3, of course. Now, if we look in router 1, the advertising router to get to those networks is router two. So remember in the first videos when we talked about scalability and how we saved uh, resources and traffic by instead of router one having to you know receive all of the advertisements and calculate the tree for all of the routes, the area border routers will just summarize and then you just have to deal with one LSA. So this is the reason that we don't actually have a problem. Again, I'll spare you the time and I'm not going to ping everywhere from everywhere, but it will work in this situation. So in an OSPF domain where there's no redistribution, if you have a duplicate router ID in different areas, I guess technically you're not going to have a problem. 
It's obviously still not recommended to do this, but it's again, just one of those interesting technicalities where if you examine the behavior, things appear to be working. But what happens if I wanna redistribute those loopback addresses we have configured on router one into the OSPF domain? First, I'm gonna change the router ID back to router four's 4.4.4.4. .4 .4 .4. And again, we'll clear the process for the change to propagate. And again, wait for convergence. Okay, everything's converged again. Now what I'm going to do is redistribute connected on router one. So that's gonna basically redistribute the connected loopbacks into OSPF, and we're gonna see some external routes come up. Now, if we look on router four, again, waiting for convergence. So now we see some external routes on router four. If we ping the loopbacks, it's gonna work, it's gonna work from router five, everything's all good, everybody's happy, right? But now, what if we have router four sharing the same router ID as router one? Let's set that up. In clear. And again, waiting for convergence. Okay, so everything has converged, but if you look at the routing table here, you see that we lost our external routes. What about on router three? There they are, they are in router three. But what happened, now they're gone. There's one again. There we have them. Now they're gone. So basically what happened is if I ping from router three, to one of the loopbacks, it's timing out, it's not working. Now, the reason for this is because of LSA5. You see these two successful because it was in the routing uh, table and now it's out and it's going in and it's going out and it's going in and it's going out. Okay, so let's look at the OSPF database on router one. Because we have these external routes, now we have an LSA type five. Again, LSA is covered later, but LSA type five is the only LSA that doesn't change the advertising routers router ID as it's propagated throughout the entire OSPF domain. The other LSAs are only propagated within their area. The type five is throughout the entire OSPF domain. If we look on router two, we see that we have the type five and it's advertised by router one. Again, router three, Again, advertising router, router one. So what happens is when this LSA gets to router four and router four sees what it thinks is its own router ID in the um, advertising router field of the LSA, it doesn't agree with that. It says, hey, that's I don't have those routes. That's not right. So it's it basically sends a flush to um, the other router saying, hey, take out this LSA. This is not right. We don't have this anymore because the only router who can flush an LSA is the originating router, unless the, the LSA ages out. But again, getting advanced, we don't have to worry about that for now. Just know if we come on router four, we're gonna see this error, which is a flood war. So basically router four saying, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have those routes, take those out. And that's why we see it going in the table and out of the table and in the table and out of the table on router three. So. In conclusion, we see that I guess the final answer is yes, all of the router IDs need to be unique between the different areas. If all you've got is OSPF uh, with no redistribution, things appear to operate fine, but um, at any time you might start redistributing. So you definitely don't wanna have a duplicate router ID anywhere in your OSPF domain. I just thought that was really interesting. Uh, I wouldn't have thought about that unless the case came across my desk. So I wanted to share it. And like I said, just break up some of the lectures with some hands-on labbing. Throw this in your own lab. Uh, let me know in the comments what you find out and if anybody has more expertise and wants to leave a comment with a more technical explanation of what's actually happening in the flood war and you know why router 4 is sending the flush and why it's going in and out of the table, uh, feel free to do so. But until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.